scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Show us the ancient path. Will you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the ways of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. Will you show us the ancient path and lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the footsteps of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. Hear me. Everything that you do in the kingdom, if you must be a visionary leader, that God will trust with influence, especially in this end time. You must love people genuinely and love God genuinely. Just reduce this a little and let me say something. Please look up. You know, most times when people see me, the first thing they want is prayer for impartation of anointing. And then... Other people say, what have you done that makes a generation to love you so much and to listen to you? And I tell them, you have to look beyond the teachings. You have to look beyond the miracles. You have to look beyond. You cannot, you cannot stage manage global influence. No. It is a product of genuine love for God. Did it not say in your Bible, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men. Now watch this. Watch this. When you love Jesus, you will be more than willing to decrease so that he will increase. He never said to diminish. He only said to decrease. I always give an example with this stage. Look at this beautiful pulpit. Do you know the center of focus is the top of the pulpit? Is that true? Yeah. That is where I am resting my Bible. But it's impossible to look at this and not look at what is carrying it. That is how influence is. If your, your life is about projecting and revealing Jesus, the focus becomes Jesus. But there will always be a space for a generation to see the one who lifts him. We saw both Jesus and the cross that carried him. Two of them today. We respect the one that died and we also respect the cross that carried the one that died. The reason why the world cannot look at you is because you are about building your own empire using men. You are about proving a point to everybody that I'm not a failure using men. It may be a sincere desire, but I'm teaching you superior kingdom leadership that foundation number one is a sincere desire to see jesus lifted and a sincere desire to love his people number two for sake of time is god giving somebody a new orientation the second pillar upon which kingdom leadership is built is called character please write it down character there's no such thing as good or bad character there's character or not character is always positive good habit or bad habit but you must become a person of character you may have heard people say the anointing will take you up but it's character that retains you there yes character is very important 
in Galatians chapter 5, when you read from verse 16 to 22, we're not reading, just write for reference. Galatians 5, 16 to 22, talks about the works of the flesh. And then when we get to verse 22, it talks about what we know to be the fruit of the Spirit. The fruits that should be resident in the recreated human spirit. And the Bible lists nine of them. And there are all kinds of um, theological explanations others see them as expressions of love or nine distinct fruit of the spirit the most important thing is that these are the spiritual qualities verse 22 that define a person of character you are a person of character to the degree to which the fruit of the spirit is lavishly at work in you are we together give it to us please 22 but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace patience or long suffering gentleness goodness faith meekness self-control or temperance he say against such there is no law that means there is no law on earth that means well for men that fights whoever has this attribute whether it is christianity or any other religion nobody will ever frown at a man do you know everything we do in life is an attempt to replicate this atmosphere in our lives you get dogs because you are looking for peace is that true you get a security man because you suspect as much as you came to church you still locked your car outside why because you suspect that not all men have faith you are looking for a you are trying to simulate the atmosphere of the fruit of the spirit when you are vetting employers in your place of work beyond skill why do you throw some and pick some you are looking for the semblance of the fruit of the spirit at work in them someone say character in first timothy chapter 3 when you read from verse 1 to 9 first timothy chapter 3 from verse 1 to 9 apostle paul was mentoring his son in the gospel timothy and he was guiding him to understand the ethics of effective ministry as far as the ministry of an overseer or a pastor were concerned and he began to list a group of things that he would need to watch for are we together now yes character is not necessarily perfection but you see you are a person of character to the degree to which there is a level of dexterity in your life when you are a person who is easily given to compromise you are not a person of character compromise in words compromise in deeds you must be a person of value and values even if you are wrong let it be that you are definite about something it is easy to be corrected it's easy to correct somebody who is definitely wrong than someone who vacillates between good and bad that was why it was difficult for jesus to correct the scribes and the pharisees when he met the the woman at the well she was completely wrong and he, he she switched immediately when he met a man who was possessed of devils it was pure darkness light could come immediately but when he met people who were in his crusades they would come early and sit inside but never be open for conversion hallelujah character this i believe is one of the attributes that we need to pray seriously especially for this generation to have we're a generation that clamors for power, revelation, miracles, and that is wonderful. And it seems, especially in the area of ministry, that the moment you have access to revelation, you have access to some level of results, it does not matter what else happens. No, it does. It does. It does. Someone say character. Number three. The third pillar upon which kingdom leadership is built on is called competence. Please write it down. Competence. Number one, your love for God and for men. Number two, character, moral excellence. The quality of being a person of moral, high moral standards. And then number three, competence. Proverbs 18, 16 
the gift of a man makes room for him the bible says and bring him before great men the gift of a man you change that word gift to the value of a man that it is able to make room you know what it means to make room to make room does not mean to show him where there is an empty room there is no empty room for you anywhere it is your gift that will push a space and give you a place in life and destiny There are no empty lands, not even in the Bible. There are giants in every land, even if it is your own. It will take something from you to dislodge, displace, and create a place for yourself. Please hear me, believers. If we do not press for competence, remember my introductory explanation about leadership that is about deploying the gift and the ability that you have. This is where I need to charge the body of Christ respectfully um with every sense of gravity and importance because we have used spirituality as an excuse for mediocrity and incompetence it is only in the church that incompetence is tolerated indefinitely under the guise that the most important thing is god or the grace of god so we ship every kind of incompetence no the gift of a man not the gift of a christian the gift of a man any man makes room for him bringing him before great men i made up my mind as a man of god that the only advantage in my life will not be the anointing i should be able to communicate with non-christians in an intelligent way exporting kingdom values within a context that can lead to transformation even national transformation if you're a man of God here, let me charge you and encourage you. The pulpit is your constituency, but not your only point of influence. If you can only be heard by Christians, you are not, you are not really valuable. If your audience are only Christians, you are not valuable. A Muslim should be able to listen to you. And even though he may not accept your Jesus, he cannot deny the dexterity of your thoughts, the applicability of the principles that you are bringing. This is what will give you an upper hand. Are we learning? Yes, sir. The Bible says, buy the truth and sell it not. Believers, in the name of Jesus, let the spirit of laziness live our lives forever. <laughs> You are a man of God here. Obtain grace from God and go and do your homework. Let's stop bringing shame and reproach to God through incompetence. No. Be sound in doctrine. Walk upon yourself. Communicate the truth with intelligence. Let people be able to listen to you and let their staying under your influence be worth their time. Let people not frown while they are listening to you and say, I wasted my time. I would have been sleeping instead of coming to... You are not given, given life applicable truths. This is also true for a CEO. When you classically speaking there are different levels of leadership you see the list of them that we know professionally speaking is positional leadership that means the loyalty of the people to you is simply because they appointed you there they really don't like you they don't love you they are not loyal to you it's just because they have to make do with that appointment you must transit through knowledge people should love you for who you are beyond the office you occupy is the reason why we are obsessed about offices i am apostle joshua selman because once you remove that apostle joshua selman has no value among people no shouldn't be when you say jesus when you say messiah when you say christ any of his names carry value is someone learning make up your mind to be competent as a businessman make up your mind to be competent beyond being rich make up your mind to be competent in genesis chapter 41 i wish we had time the full text is from 33 to 46. this was joseph being called out of the dungeon by pharaoh remember pharaoh had a dream 
and his sorcerers magicians could not interpret the dream and they called this young hebrew boy called joseph joseph shaves and stands before pharaoh pharaoh now narrates the dream and joseph says well god will give pharaoh an understanding of peace then he begins his interpretation when he interprets it now i hope you know that joseph was not lifted for interpreting the dream he was lifted for bringing solutions out of the dream he said now let pharaoh set this and that and 20 percent of the grains the agricultural products in egypt let it be stored and saved for the next seven years and then put people over that affairs let's look at verse 38 for sake of verse 40 verse 40 just for the sake of time verse 40 please give it to us um okay let, let me let's 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 see 38 wherever we stop i need you to see the context of this genesis 41 38 and pharaoh said unto his servants can we find such a man as this this is a king testifying this is what competence does do you know that when you are really competent it will veto where you are coming from when people begin to say where are you from is because there is there is there is a level of incompetence that makes it necessary to find out where you are coming from there is a level of value that can veto your background you are too important to be ignored watch this now can we find such a one in whom is the spirit of god next verse and pharaoh said unto joseph for as much as god has showed you all this there is none so discreet and wise as that out as a result thou shalt be over my house no election no interview no discussion kings were not stupid people do you know the risk it takes to carry a jewish boy from the prison with no training the question is who will train him when the king now said i gave all of you a level playing ground whoever has answers come forth and nobody could bring it thou shalt be over my house please give it to us and according to thy word shall my people be ruled what a risk only in the throne will i be greater than you next verse look at the three things that began to come to him and pharaoh said unto joseph see i have set thee over all the land of egypt favor answering to competence and pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it on joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck can you imagine a man leaves the prison in the morning and says i'm coming the pre i'm sure the prison warder said make sure you return later and the boy smiled and said you do not know who is leaving that prison i can imagine the man who was shaving joseph to go and meet pharaoh oh dear never do look down on a competent man even if you find him in prison prison is a deceptive place it's a place where both good and bad people meet so be careful when you, who you treat in the prison because you don't know who is leaving that place some will live to their death but some will live to their rising the prison is a mysterious place where you find both good and bad people the prison like the cross it's a mysterious place you will find Jesus on the cross you will also find thieves on the cross don't generalize when you see everybody in prison or the cross I'm speaking to you prophetically because there are people right now it looks like there are no results in their lives yet they are in the prison could it be that some of them are 48 hours left to rise like Joseph is God giving you wisdom let's finish that scripture hmm. media please give it to us let's walk very quickly so we can finish and the bible says and he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had and they cried before him bowed the knee and made him the ruler over all the land of egypt 
let's just finish it and pharaoh said unto joseph i am pharaoh and without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in the land of egypt are you seeing that many things we pray for were assigned to come to us through competence and he gave him a name called zavnath pania and his and he gave him to wife asena the daughter of potiphera the priest of on and joseph went out over the land of egypt the last verse and he was 30 years old this is the part that disturbs me he was how old i hope you know that egypt the then egypt was bigger than africa don't think it's just a small thing you see on the map today egypt was a world superpower as at that time how do you make a 30 year old boy without interview who had spent x years plus two extra years as a result of the carelessness of a wine presser i will hold on through the storm and i will hold on to your word my life will soon reveal you're the lifter of men lifter of men i will hold on through the storm yes i will hold on to your word my story is about to change by the lifter of men the lifter of men hear me if you ever doubt that god lifts men think again while they were driving me into this city i was almost in tears because i remember walking on some of your roads many years ago quietly thinking about my destiny and declaring that i will not be small maybe i pass some of you who knows but no more If you are trying to do a tour of Port Harcourt for me, you may be wasting your time. This is not a place of ignorance. There was a time it was once home. But you may never know. That's exactly what happens when you do not rise. You will remain an activity that passes with time. Listen to me. I want somebody to make a covenant with his destiny today that incompetence must live my life must live my life apostle i can cook can kings call you to cook for them listen you only stop in your journey to competence when you get to the palace if you are not yet in the palace don't flatter yourself keep moving keep moving apostle i'm a man of god until the day that the nations call you and acknowledge Jesus risen in your life, don't stop. I'm a businessman. I'm a CEO. With how much? I have 100 million in there. Can you give it to the work of God and, and sleep sound? If you cannot, you are not yet there. Don't say I'm a rich man. There's a lot of early arrival mentality that is killing so many people and i say this with a heart of love many times people look at me and say apostle what are you studying again what are you praying again i'm almost tempted to say get thee behind me satan compared to where he's taking us we're just a step out of the cave until we bring nations to the cross in one day we're not yet there I told you be careful who claps for you some of you too many mediocres have clapped for you too early for doing nothing and it has put you in a position where you are comparing yourself with people who have not even started anything no sir is God speaking to someone who we'll find somewhere to pray but listen to me you want to be a leader indeed nobody will follow an incompetent person 
pastor members will not come because you invited them they will come because they are comfortable sitting under the leadership of an intelligent spiritual composed disciplined enlightened pastor that adds value perpetually to them a wealthy man will not leave his house and make a fool of himself and come and sit down under your atmosphere for three four hours wasting his time listening to disjointed irrelevant information that is an insult to his pedigree no there is a kind of light that brings kings the bible says gentiles will come to your light but kings don't come to your light they come to the brightness of your rising listen music directors musicians don't say i can sing who has vetted you thank god for the song you wrote thank god for all the mistakes you are learning provided you keep pressing Don't become unnecessarily impressed with yourself there are times to pat yourself at the back i once met a group of people business people and you know most times business people think men of god have nothing to tell them so I sat down and I listened to the people. They were talking very arrogantly. And when they were, I was almost saying, please, I have the important things to do. These people are wasting my time here. Disjointed gaps in their understanding. And I said, how do these people expect to make it? Just because somebody gave you a large money to start business, doesn't mean you are there. The five talent was given. So you are not marked for what you are given. You are marked for what you made from what you were given that you had a father that could give you 100 million thank god for the leverage we start marking from what is added to it not what is given are we together please challenge yourself in the name of jesus i hope you are not offended i'm stretching you to go back some of you from this place right now go to a bookstore straight and say i am tired of failing love everybody but follow people with results don't waste your time shorten your journey by gathering information you don't have to throw out again through incompetence I love everybody but I do not give my destiny attention to everybody the urgency in my destiny does not allow me to keep editing garbages I put in my mind and only to find out that what I call light was darkness so there are some them the bible says to follow who through faith and patience have obtained not are obtaining hallelujah is someone learning say after me in the name of jesus from today i obtain grace to be competent say in the name of jesus my world will see the glory of god that rises from within me amen God has called you to be the prof a prophet over the nations. Stay with God. Do your homework. Let something from heaven come upon your life. And when you stand up, competition is only necessary to people who are at a level, an average level. You see, you don't queue in the air. You only have traffic on the ground. The difficulty of the plane is until it lifts because there can be traffic but once it lifts no matter how big it is the plane is there is enough space in the air so a competitive mentality is already an indication that you are surrounding yourself around a sphere with too many mediocres. i will soar with you above the clouds father you are king over the floods and i will be still and know you are god my soul be still and know you are god let me give you the last key and we'll pray has god spoken to someone I challenged myself years ago and I still do that I will never settle you see champions never even know where the finish line is 
their focus is not to finish their focus is to remain a champion will pass the finish line and still be looking this one thing i do he says forgetting the things that are behind i press this was the greatest one of the greatest apostles wrote to third of the new testament and yet at the end of his life he still continued to advocate his press hallelujah let's do a quick recap number one the first pillar upon which kingdom leadership rests on is your love for god and for people did you get that number two is character number three competence now number four service the last pillar upon which kingdom leadership rests on is service Luke 22 please from verse 25 we're reading down to 27 Jesus was contrasting the world's way of leadership as opposed to the kingdom's way let's hear what he had to say and he said unto them the king of the gentiles exercise lordship over them and they that exercise authority over them are called benefactors he said but ye shall not be so but he that is greatest among you must prove his greatness by being as the younger and he that is chief as he that doth serve for whether is greater he that seated at meat or he that serve it is it not he that seated at the meal he said but i am among you jesus is speaking not as one that rules even though i am lord but as far as leadership is concerned i am among you as he that serveth can i tell you this the purpose of authority is service if you cannot serve with the influence and the authority that god gives you then you are not relevant as far as his program is concerned the temptation is there to use your influence to subjugate people the temptation is there to use your influence to make a name for yourself but i have discovered from scripture from history from fathers and from my experience that the greatest way to have a name if you ever need one a name that counts is to serve service is powerful i have profound regard and respect for people who serve me elisha was never supposed to be a prophet there was no prophecy about elisha taking over from elijah the next prophet should come from among the sons of the prophet who were being mentored in the school but one person served his way and rewrote prophecy until he carried a double portion can i tell you this as i prepare to wrap up some of you have served laboriously and diligently in this church and the devil is about to tempt you to make you believe that your service is making you too weak can i tell you the way up is through service when you find people who serve i show you people who will never remain at that same position the justice system of god will not allow you to remain at that same position in fact run away from a leader who does not have a track record of service authentic leadership comes as a reward for effective service my life is full of stories at strategic points in my life how that i served and sometimes served to a fault uh, you know you may have heard me say that there is nobody who comes out of nowhere that narrative is absolute nonsense just because you are not aware of where david came out from does not mean he was not in the wilderness behind every story i tell you every glory they say is a story you are rewriting your story and you are writing your story now write it with honor even in if in tears write it with honor because someday what looks like a scar in your hand 
will become the symbol of honor the hymn writer says so i cherish the old rugged cross till my burdens at last i lay down i will cling to the old rugged cross here's the part i love and exchange it someday for a crown. So what is making you cry today is currency. You will soon exchange it for honor tomorrow. A day will come, a clarion call will be made at the table of greatness. But a certain scar requirement will be the qualification to be seated there. And if you do not have that scar through service, you cannot be given room among the great today when you go to heaven you don't just use crowns to know jesus because the elders too have crowns all you need to do is tell everybody in heaven to lift up their hands the one who has what was once a symbol of shame the one who bled the same hand that once brought shame is the hand today that holds the scepter of honor i don't know who i'm speaking to but your service is giving you permission to levels you are not even ready young lady many people are looking at you and saying leave these church people you will serve church and die here for nothing you better resist the temptation of satan to abort a glorious destiny that is still in formation nothing is excellent while it is still forming as women who cook when you look at the pot ask our wonderful women here mothers and wives when you are in the kitchen sometimes it looks messy and yet that is what we are waiting for to eat when you see the food while it's there you are cutting you are doing this the same meat you salivate over if you see it in a raw form you may not eat it again just because god is making you don't allow naysayers and ignorant people to abort something that is still in process anybody who sees you and say you don't look like it say god is still working is yeah. still working where is the husband you said you will get for serving in church you better use common sense tell them god is still working after working for many years it will be an insult for god to just give you a man god will give you a nation in a man believe me help them please i know what i'm saying my life is a testimony god does not pay people every day but the day your reward comes ah he will carry a man's lifetime and give you in a moment hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son Attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you